concerned with the people of Odisha to educate them, to sensitize them and to enlighten them. So, and other things that he has more than 20 books to his credit in philosophy, literature and you know that he is a Sahitya Academy awardee and his book, his autobiography has become a great piece of literature for people. With these words I would request him to kindly <coughs> share his ideas with us on Indian culture. Dear President, Dina Shai Mirusha Dinkana. Dr. Mahanti and all good friends here. You would desire that I ought to speak a few, few sentences about Indian culture. What Dr. Mahanti has already said that why Indian culture, why not culture in general? Because all our talk is best. There is nothing Indian or European or American. You yourself said there is only one thing and which you can call Indian or American or call European or Eastern or Western. That's a good way, but you have already said the conclusion which I wanted to put. Now, first of all, let us concentrate on Indian culture. First of all, we should know what is India. What is India? You look at the geography of India. It is so unique that perhaps no other country should buy, can buy with it. It is said in Vishnu Purana, our ancient post Purana, that Uttarasya, in the northern side, there is vast Himalayas. Vast. It stands as a the Prachira. And then other three sides, there are oceans. And this particular land is called 
Bharata. And we are called Sons of India. Bharati Tatra Santati. The idea is this boundary, you can just see how wonderful it has been chopped out. Even in Africa, greater and richer than us in all natural resources can be compared to India. Any country, look to England, look to Japan, they are almost identical. Is there a, is there a great barrier of worst winds from the north which can be compared to Himalayas? Even in Italy, Alps is no comparison compared to the vast, mighty Himalayas. And if you concentrate your attention on the Himalayas, perhaps it will take three lectures for all of us to describe what Devata Atma Himalaya is, the soul of the gods. Kalidas has himself said, Devata Atma Himalaya. It is the soul of the gods, not of ordinary men. Why it is said so, all that discussion will so prove that the boundary of India is wonderfully carved out by nature itself. And look to three sides. Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, and vast Indian Ocean. What you call Indian Ocean, it is non-dependent from Pacific Ocean. And it is also non-dependent from Atlantic on the other side. It is one ocean, Sapta Sindhu. This peculiar feature of India lacks everywhere. Go to Russia, go to Germany, Germany, come to England, go to Japan, go to America. You shall find that mountains are parallel from east to west, not to the north and south. The, the, the bizarre world, world of Meru uh, Pradesh, that polar, enters through America freely because there is no Himalayas to protect it. And that way it is also connected with Asia. America at the top is connected with Asia. So as Professor said, all are one. This is a fundamental realization. Yet India is a distinguished place that is established beyond bounds. <coughs> Other features of India is, if you go to the Himalayas, the flora and fauna of the Himalayas is exactly the flora and fauna of India on the horizontal plane. You climb Himalayas, you find layers and layers of flora and fauna, plants, trees, flowers, wonderful flowers, which in other countries you do not have. And the name of the flower is Brahma Kamala. Brahma Kamala in the Himalayas, on the Himalayas, people spend thousands and thousands of rupees to go and see how Brahma Kamala unfolds. <coughs> Multi rainbows fall on you the moment Brahma Kamala unfolds. And we spend not a single while to know the name of Brahma Kamala. That is our reaction towards India. It is so cheap for us because so easily available. So, India has its own station and position. And strange thing happened. In the world, there are five major religions. What is the meaning of religion? People obey its dictates. Religions give certain statements and you accept it. Otherwise, you do not belong to that religion. And there are major five religions in the world. And out of three, out of five, three religions are India only. One is Hinduism, another is Buddhism, another is Jainism. The other two, Christianity and Islam, they have come to India. And they have found identified with Indian soil and Indian temporal mind. They do not feel that we are foreigners. Rabindranath has made it very clear. 
He who comes to India doesn't feel that he is a foreigner. Next generation, he is a Pakka Indian. In other, other countries, it is not that easy. That also gives us indication towards Indian culture. The Indian culture is, whosoever comes, feels the land belongs to him as much as it belongs to us. So, the same thing Dr. Mahanti said, that we are overriding a difference where the other is not there. So all the three, three great major religions of the world are India one. And Christianity and Islam, if you open any place of the Quran, Holy Quran, you shall see they are not contradicting the principles of Upanishads. I was astonished. Because we do not read, that is why there are so many problems for us. Just purchase a copy of the Holy Quran, open the first page and see Isavashya Upanishad there. The first Upanishad acclaim this Isavashya Upanishad. Isavashya Miram Sarvam. Jatkincham Jagatyam Jagat. This line is perfectly explained in the first page of the Holy Quran. And if you go to Christianity, most of the things you can swallow well. <coughs> that is why people of America accepted Vivekanand, Swami Vivekananda, so easily. It's not that Vivekananda was wonderful and they were august. No. Vivekananda spoke the words which are latent in their own mind. They were thinking that things could have been such and Vivekananda expressed them in fullest terms and they were surprised that how could there be a religion which is a different religion, totally different religion and yet the common voice is there. So this gives you a picture of rock picture of India and to any side we explore we shall find a wonderful message India has for the whole world though it is a part of the world. India is not separate from the world. But it's a part of the world, not a well-guarded world. <coughs> India is well-guarded by nature in this point. Now, what is culture? Culture and civilization, there are two things. But sometimes one is used as for the other. Suppose you say, culture of India. You can also say civilization of India. In English, <coughs> culture and civilization are interchangeably used. In Uriya also, Sanskriti and Sabhyata. Sanskriti is culture. Sabhyata is civilization. They are also interchangeably used. But if you look carefully, and modern scholars have looked it very carefully through the microscopy eye, that two belongs to two different areas. Though they look alike, still they belong to two different areas. One single sentence of one existentialist will make it very clear. Civilization is what we have. Culture is what we are. How simply they have defined it. Suppose you have big buildings, great organizations, all that you have. So that is your civilization. Not culture. What you are, that is culture. So what you have, that is your civilization. What you are, is your culture. So nicely described within two sentences. I will give one example. Mighty Ravana is a great civilized man from a great civilized culture. At his time, there is no parallel to Ravana because everything he had. Yes. Even Shita has told in so many words, such a great man like you, why have you stood so low? And if he is a great, what has made him stoop so low? 
because he has everything Sharna Mahi Lanka all the powers sons like Meghanath brother like Vinishana and Kumakanna he has all everything he had everything so he is a great person wisdom enough Ramana has his own Sanghidas Shiva Tandava Stotra and very close to Shiva he is a great man so all great men of the world should now note it. With the best of their great, great place, they may be very small creatures. <coughs> the Avana, incomparable in greatness. But how small he became for a small incident. And this has been asked by Shita herself. You are a great man, born in a great family, owner of a great wealth, everything great. But you are so small. So here is the conflict between civilization and culture. Ravana is great because he has everything great. But small because there is a small value in culture. <coughs> so this statement of Sita also distinguishes between culture and civilization. Suppose there is a very big building. So it is it is a mark of civilization. And some gentleman lives there who is a very small man. So we can say a small man means culturally small resides in a great civilized building. Same thing? Kitra Saudhare, a Pirata Munster was not. What about the Kudia? Tadi would have been a Basa de Monchichi. So, what does it show? The, the, the mighty expense of your civilization may also contain a very low graded cultured being. So, Indian civilization is one thing, Indian culture is another. Am I clear? Then what is this culture? <coughs> what you are? I need not give you examples because that will take you too far away into so many descriptions. What was wrong with Ravan? First, he cheated Rama and Sita. So he who cheats is a low value person in culture. Why did you cheat? Even Indrajita said, Father, if you wanted to so bring Sita, would have used her weapons. We are ready. Why did you go and steal Sita? So cheating is first number of D culture. Second is, was it necessary for you to bring Sita to Langa? and without informing us. We are ready to fight. <coughs> we are Khatriyas. We believe in prowess. If Rama could resist us, so far so good. If we cannot resist, so far so good. So that is Rana Vidya. Why would you behave that? He has no reply. Because for one reason or other, he has done a small thing. A small prick in the balloon. The vast civilization of Ravana collapsed, physically collapsed, <coughs> burnt into pieces because there is a small cultural prick. <coughs> so any country should be conscious very acutely about culture and also about civilization. And what is secret of Indian culture? But Ramanthi has made it very clear. You should have given the talk for you. You really <laughs> have so much trouble. He pointed out that the inner conviction of an Indian is there is no other. There is no other. Hmm. Suppose you say other man. Indian mind will say, I know he is other, but not the other man. 
take away a definite article D from it. It's A, A, another, not the other. In any country, in its own literature or philosophy, thinks other is an insurmountable difficulty on the path of man. Insurmountable. But in India, strangely enough, even a villager knows his enemy is enemy, all right. But he is not an author. The same thing came from Sita's mouth. Sita said, Your Excellency Ravana, I ask you one question. In Valmiki Ramana, it has been done. <coughs> think, as you have behaved to Rama, if Rama would have behaved to you, would you pardon him? Ravana was silent. Something you have done to Rama. <coughs> Suppose Rama would have done the same thing to you. Can you pardon him? Ravana was silent. Ravana understood that he has already committed a cultural blunder. It is not a blunder in civilization. So all the statements of Sita in the original Ramayana of Valmiki are questions to Ravana about the culture of his country and the culture of his life. How could you? Such a great man, you did such a small thing. Why? That was the point. So, <coughs> whenever we think of culture, our main aim should be, what are we? Somebody says, who is a gentleman? Now, who can be trusted in darkness? If you can trust anybody in darkness, then that man is a gentleman. Then the moment anything becomes dark, everybody becomes very ungentle and uncultured. Why? Because culture is low. Culture. And if you carry a high mark of culture as demanded by India, you shall see when you go to the other countries, they immediately know that this fellow is an Indian. Not that you are rich, not that you have dollar, not that you have a great figure. Why? By your mere manners, they know it's a Pakka Indian. It happened with me. He switched to mobile scanning. But how? There is no other. <laughs> how can mobile stand on our way? If all the mobiles roll at the top of the bus, there is no other. So, it happened in my case, personally I have seen. I was carrying a bag in my hand. And I immediately brought it and placed on the table of the man who was examining. He said, not necessary. I was stunned. Then I said, there is a small camera inside. That, that we know. I said, it was given an odd hour to me as a gift. And that is why I couldn't return it. No one would carry it. I have placed it. That also we know. How many things they know? And this is a very strange thing they know. Then I said, I must pay something. No, it has also been given a gift to you. I said, what has happened? I turned, looked around, and many people in the queue were looking at me. I said, take some money. It is a gift to you. We know that there is a camera. We know that you have surrendered it to us. We know we can charge, but we declare the gift given to you at the last moment when we were boarding the plane, that is a gift from outside. Why is it so? Because they understood. The man to whom they are confronting, he is not a thief. He might have committed a mistake, but that mistake is pardonable. Here there is a mistake and penalize him. This may be civilization, but not culture. I can give a hundred examples.